Today I am sharing the best foods and some meal ideas specifically for depression and anxiety. Share breakfast, lunch, and dinner so you'll get to see what I eat in a day to have a calm, stress-free, happy mood. First, just a quick look at their literature for how these top nutrient-dense foods for depression were chosen. Lachance and Ramsey did a systemic literature review and they were able to come up with an evidence-based nutrient profiling system for foods that are supportive of anti-depression and also anxiety. They were able to come up with a list of the 12 antidepressant nutrients. So all 12 of these things included in the diet and an adequate amount are going to be really supportive of a happy, calm mood. They gave the top foods with these 12 nutrients an AFS score or an antidepressant food score. So the higher the percentage, the higher the antidepressant nutrient density of a food. Here is a table from their research article showing the top foods or the foods with the top AFS score. So they break it down into animal-based foods and plant foods. And if you're interested in learning more, Dr. Drew Ramsey, one of the researchers for this article, actually wrote a book called Eat to Beat Depression and Anxiety, which includes a lot more resources and recipes. So for breakfast, I had what I am calling my feel good green smoothie. And in this smoothie, I include my own homemade unsweetened cashew milk, but you can use any unsweetened plant milk. I used a vanilla protein. This is a plant-based vanilla protein that I really like. I also used one tablespoon of flaxseed, half of an avocado. I actually only used a quarter of a frozen banana. I just wanted to show you the banana here. And for greens, I used spinach, which has a 97% score on the AFS food scale. And then I also had some dandelion greens, so I threw them in there as well. Not only is this smoothie really high on the AFS food scale because of the greens, but it's also good for your blood sugar balance. Balance. So we're gonna feel full, calm, and not spike in crass or blood sugar. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite lunches that's super quick and easy, but really high on the antidepressant food scale. We are making a tuna salad, classic for lunch, right? I've got my canned tuna here. I'm using a skipjack tuna, just regular old canned tuna. It can actually be up to 21% on the AFS food scale. Really great protein to include in your meals. It's actually even higher than salmon sometimes. The skipjack tuna is lower in mercury, so that's why I picked that. Okay, so we've got our tuna. So that's gonna be the first thing that goes into our bowl. I just need to drain my can of tuna really quick. Some visitors that smell the tuna. Just go ahead and flake our tuna into the bowl. Dijon mustard. I love, love adding Dijon mustard to a tuna salad, salmon salad. I love the tang of it. If you don't love Dijon mustard, you can use regular mustard or you can leave it out. And we need some mayo. I love this Primal Kitchen Mayo because they use avocado oil instead of canola oil, um, which is a little bit of a healthier anti-inflammatory oil, just about like a good tablespoon. Then to brighten up the tuna, brighten up the flavors, I'm adding about a quarter of a lemon. And I'm just gonna juice it right in there and hope that I don't get any seeds in there. I think we're safe. Now to give it some flavor, just a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. My canned tuna does already have some salt, so I don't want to add too much salt. But if you get a no salt added tuna, you may need a little bit more. To grind of fresh pepper. Now for a spice you may not be expecting, I am going to do a quarter to a half teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna start with just a quarter of a teaspoon. I actually had a tuna salad at a local deli. It has cumin in it, and I tried it, and it was amazing. Like, I absolutely loved it. And I just would never think to add cumin to a tuna salad. I know it can kind of have an off-putting smell to some, but I really, really like it. It's optional. If you don't love it, leave it out. Herbs and spices tend to be really high on the AFS scale, so adding more spices and herbs whenever we can. Speaking of herbs and spices, 
we also need to add some greens. We need to add some fresh parsley. I'm just going to give the parsley a little rough chop. I say that's about two tablespoons of fresh parsley. You could add more vegetables to your tuna salad. You could add chopped celery, chopped bell pepper, add red onion or a shallot. That's our tuna salad. So quick and easy, but the taste is amazing. You could double, triple this recipe, whatever you wanna do, and that can be your lunch, your meal prep for the week. Love to have it on a piece of sourdough or on whole grain or sprouted bread or just over some greens. The number one green on the AFS food scale is watercress. And even this bag of watercress says it's the number one nutrient dense vegetable. Watercress's AFS score is 127%. Watercress is just loaded with so many of those essential nutrients for mood, for depression, and for anxiety. So anytime I can find it, I love, I love, love, love it. Add it to salads, you can add it to smoothies, you can add it on top of soup as like a garnish. You can add it on top of avocado toast. It's a very similar taste to arugula, but I find it's actually even more mild than arugula, so not even quite as peppery. It's almost like, like baby, baby spinach as far as the texture. Very thin, very easy to eat. Definitely not like really hearty, like kale or really bitter. If you can get your hands on watercress, I highly recommend it. A really great substitution though would be baby spinach. Spinach is 97% on the AFS food scale so still super high up there. That is my spiced lemony tuna salad that is perfect for pairing with watercress or whatever type of greens you have on hand. I wanted to share another lunch option that I enjoyed later this week when it got really, really cold. So I had a piece of avocado toast on some gluten-free sourdough and I topped it with as many greens as I could fit on top of the toast. I made a huge pot of soup that is full of greens and almost every vegetable I can think of. So celery, lots of bell peppers, some collard greens, carrots, and cauliflower rice and zucchini, all made with a chicken bone broth with some spices. And it's so warming and comforting. For dinner, we had a gluten-free spaghetti with clams and broccoli. Clams actually have a 30% rating on the AFS food scale, so it's a really fun protein that I'm trying to use more often, and this recipe is so easy because it uses canned clams. I'll leave a link to the recipe that inspired my version of the dish and the changes that I made, but here are all the ingredients that I used to make the dish, and just showing a close-up of the chopped canned clams that I found at my grocery store. I'll leave a link to them in my Amazon shop. And then you also need some extra virgin olive oil. So first thing you do is you just boil some water and cook your pasta. Just follow the package directions on your pasta. And then meanwhile, you're gonna heat a saute pan with your olive oil, some garlic and some red pepper flakes and just kind of move the garlic around so that it doesn't burn. Then you quickly add the juice from the canned clams as well as some water and and some lemon juice and this is gonna reduce and be the sauce for the spaghetti with clams and broccoli just letting it simmer, letting it reduce by half. And then in the meantime, in the last two minutes of cook time for the pasta, I added some frozen broccoli just to add some greens and another food that's really high on the AFS scale. Then I went ahead and added my canned clams and some lemon zest and stirred that all around. It was smelling amazing at this point. Added some fresh parsley, drained and rinsed my noodles and my broccoli and added them right to the saute pan. I think at this point I realized that I needed a bigger saute pan because it was quite a lot, but I was able to coat all the pasta and the broccoli in the clam sauce and it was so, so good. Plated it up for Jack and I and he actually loved it. We both loved it to be, to be honest and definitely something I'll be making again it was such an easy simple recipe and so good for you 
I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this recipe video all about foods and meal ideas for depression and anxiety symptoms. It really is a multi-level approach that's best for more severe symptoms. So please reach out, get support from your healthcare provider or from one of the resources that I've listed down below in the description box. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, let me know what you thought of the video, let me know what videos you want to see next. When you subscribe, click on the bell so that you get notified when I upload new videos. With that, I will see you soon for another one.